Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level Finding myself a little short on review material in the North American store over this holiday season, I decided it might be fun to see what our friends in Hong Kong have been up to lately. If you're a fan of the show, you'll know we've put up tutorials for everybody to take full advantage of these foreign stores, because oftentimes they have exclusive freebies or titles that may never see the light of day in the US. The particularly nice part of the Hong Kong store is that the majority of games are in English, due to the fact that this is one of the most spoken languages in the region, which makes it one of the only places you can pick up an English language version of sought after VR titles like Summer Lessons. <laughs> I decided to pony up some cash on Play Asia, a website dedicated to helping people like you and me get PSN cards for Asian stores, then dug in to see what goodies were on offer. I picked up four titles that at time of writing have yet to see the light of day in the US, although some of them are due to over the course of this year. So let's dig in, shall we? First up, Happy Drummer VR Happy Drummer puts you in the midst of an odd little tribe that seems to really enjoy hanging out with flying elephants and playing drums. There is literally zero in the way of a tutorial. You are thrown right into the action with only subtle hints on screen as to what you should be doing. There are a few pictures being held up in front of your drum kit showing cymbals and drumsticks. It's about halfway through trying to figure that out when you realize the game has already started and somehow notes are raining down on your drum kit. A brief check skywards and you'll see a flying tribesman who is throwing down notes at you to play in time with the rhythm, exactly like Guitar Hero or any others of its ilk. Different symbols mean to use either a particular hand or a particular amount of sticks on that drum. It takes a minute to get the hang of it, but after a few songs, you start to get the gist. One of the nicer parts of Happy Drummer is that the kit will change up mid-tune, giving you a different drum set and thus a different set of notes to contend with, keeping things fresh. There is also both a day mode and a night mode, which seems to change difficulty, song type and technique. The different difficulty settings, day and night selections, and semi-decent reaction time of your virtual sticks on the virtual drum skins makes for an interesting little title. It's definitely not mind-blowing and probably doesn't have a ton of replayability, but it is fun and cheap, so it's got that going for it. Weirdly enough, Happy Drummer was not the only rhythm game in the Hong Kong store. There was also another super generically titled Audio Beats. Of the two rhythm games available, this was absolutely my favorite. Not only does the kit feel more responsive than that of Happy Drummer, but the way you play is entirely different. The songs are from pre-loaded albums. You get one album, that's about five songs, for free. I assume there is DLC to come for more tunes, but it's a vanilla game, so five it is. Luckily, these songs are way more interesting and varied than the tribal tunes of Happy Drummer, and play way differently too. Audio Beats has you not only hitting the notes on time, but also holding some notes and moving the stick around the kit, or hitting the drum at a particular angle to match an on-screen arrow. It's just way more interesting and fun as a whole. Rather than waiting for the note to touch the drum head, there's a selection of boxes in front of you that are representative of those drum heads. This felt a little easier to understand, and time. Don't let the footage fool you. When the headset is on, you are in a 100% immersive VR environment. The action gets pretty damn hectic, laughably so in fact. At some points it felt like I was playing a bullet hell game instead of a rhythm game. 
When you get on a roll though, you do start to feel pretty great. Audio beats is actually something I'd love to make the transition stateside, perhaps with a Western music centric album selection. Either way, I highly recommend giving this one a shot. I was beginning to get a little tired of rhythm games, so I decided to change it up a little bit and tackle a new and honestly pretty fucking insurmountable challenge. Kaiji VR. <laughs> Based on an existing series, Kaiji VR has you playing a tightrope game of death, being bet upon by fat cat Asian business dudes. Basically, the idea is that you and several other folks have to walk on a steel beam across a high area without losing your balance and being the first to cross. I wish I could tell you it was easy and a lot of fun, but. I'd be lying. The control scheme is a little all over the place. You're supposed to use the six axes for balance, but also the right stick. However, other than your heartbeat intensifying and some reddening on the screen, there are no other indicators of exactly how you're balancing. You can sway with the best of them, but sooner or later, you're not going to understand why you fell down. <laughs> There's just no obvious reason as to why you can't maintain balance, even after seemingly maintaining your balance very well for most of the first part of the bridge. Usually by the time the steel beam thins up, your time is basically numbered. I have no idea what happens if you actually fucking cross the thing, because after 50 or so attempts, I gave up. I never did figure out what I was doing wrong, and remember, I had the English version of the game. Last but not least, I checked out Lunar Strong, a first-person wave-based shooter with huge boss battles and some pretty sweet weapons. There's a nifty little handgun and then a much cooler sword that can catch fire and even shoot off fireballs towards enemies if you so wish. It's probably my fault, but I did not figure out how to turn around with the controller for love nor money. I was having to point the move controller behind me and teleport that way during the story elements. Mercifully, there's no teleportation needed during the fighting parts. After tackling a few small fries, you'll have a big scary boss show up with weak points and guards, etc. You do have the ability to do a kind of swift dodge by simply moving your head in a dodge type motion. However, pulling it off with the timing is like 50-50 at best. It did remind me a little of Brookhaven, but without the scare factor and way jankier gameplay wise. <laughs> Watch out! It's not terrible at all, it's just nothing super special. It's definitely a challenge though, so if you're up for that, it's maybe worth a shot. Every one of these games is under 100 Hong Kong dollars, incidentally, which is roughly $13 US. So your expectations should be sufficiently lowered before going anywhere near them. Gun to head? I'd say Audio Beats was probably my favorite. Although I did enjoy Lunar Strong a lot, despite the difficulty level and jank factor. So there you have it. Four VR experiences that can only currently be gotten on the Hong Kong store. Are these games worth your time and effort? It's a strong maybe. Personal preference will factor in a lot if you're on the fence right now. Don't worry though, we'll have full gameplay for each and every one of them up on the channel shortly. There's definitely no killer gaming app in Hong Kong yet, but some of the small titles are a lot of fun to play, even if they aren't as polished as you may like. Don't forget you can go to Play Asia after making a Hong Kong account and buy yourself a PSN card from another country, trying this out yourself if you wish. Hope you enjoyed this trip overseas and learned a little about these cool little games on the way. 
thanks so much for watching, and as always, welcome to the second level.